The way I look at this is that um, it's not really the media that causes learning, it's the instructional method that causes learning. This is a point that um, Dick Clark has made over and over again in the research literature that um, there, there's no research showing that one medium is better than another. We can't say video is better than textbooks or computers are better than face-to-face -face or something. Um, it's the instructional method we use. So I think we, we need to look at um, what are effective instructional methods for video that we can incorporate in video and, and are there affordances um, in video that are particularly uh, important? Th does it allow us to have certain instructional methods that are more difficult otherwise? And, and I think the same basic instructional principles apply in video as would apply in you know, any kind of instructional situation. So for example, I've done a lot of research on multimedia learning and I've developed um, oh, about a dozen principles of multimedia design based on um, experimental comparisons between one group that um, gets a pres one lesson and another group that gets the same lesson but with some feature added to it. So I kind of have an idea of which features promote learning and which ones don't. And for example, some of the main principles are the coherence principle, which is the idea of you know, keeping the presentation simple and focused. If there's too much extraneous um, material, uh, so in the case of video, if there's just too much detail that can distract people from the main focus of what you want them to pay attention to. Because we are limited in our uh, processing capability, we humans have a very limited working memory, we can only uh, focus on a few things at one time, it's important that we not overload people with too much going on on the screen. Um, so that's the coherence principle. Um, another principle is um, contiguity principle, that um, if we're going to have text and graphics, it's good to incorporate um, the text next to the part of the graphic that is relevant. So if we're going to have on-screen text that's superimposed on the video, it should not be placed as a caption. It should be placed next to the part of the, of the image that it's talking about so that people don't have to look back and forth. They can, the text is right next to where you should be looking. Um, and that same thing goes for kind of temporal contiguity. Obviously, the, if there's a voice, it should be synchronized with what's going on in the video. It's not a good idea to just have somebody watch and then later describe what it was they were seeing. It's good to have the, the voice being talking about, talking about what you're actually seeing. That way people can more easily make a connection between the words and the pictures. Um, we can't really hold that information in working memory very long, so if we uh, have too much time between the words and the pictures, people will lose, will lose the details. Um, well, me, what other examples? Um, one other um, principle of uh, instructional design that um, we have found in our research is what I would call the segmenting principle, which is if you have a fairly complicated uh, lesson, if the material is complicated, has a lot of different parts to it, it's good to break it down into seg kind of manageable segments rather than having one really long video that's trying to cover a lot of material. It's better to have shorter um, shorter sequences that uh, just kind of cover one point very well so that that's very well understood bef before you move on to the next one. So those are s some examples what I call the coherence principle, the contiguity principle, and the segmenting principle. And we, we have, like I said, se uh, about a dozen uh, principles of that sort.